And so here is where we track the progress of each piece of content across the, the pipeline. Now, if I go to post by campaign, you'll see that there's this post date. And this is our expected post date for each piece of content. Now, one of our challenges is how do we go ahead and automatically calculate a review date that is always seven days before the post date? So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say Xu Table Lamp. For this Facebook post, we want to aim for May 13th. As I write that out, you'll see that the review date updates automatically. So let's come here. May 20th is the second one, and that updates automatically. We're using another formula here in the review date. I could even do this in the posting calendar, right? So I have that one record that doesn't have a post date. This is our publishing calendar. You can see all of the different uh, uh, dates at which we're publishing pieces of content. If I move, say, table lamp onto the calendar, goes ahead and gives me a review date for that piece of content. So that's gonna be challenge number two. That second formula that we built together is how do we determine a review date based off of a post date automatic? Let's go ahead and start calculating the review date automatically. I'm gonna do just like I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and update XU table lamp to building. That's gonna go ahead and create those work items automatically. So if I go to my content pipeline, I see XU table lamp here. We have a tweet, the blog post, and the Facebook post, but I don't have that post date. So going into post by campaign, we have a post date that we want to aim for. So let me go ahead and assign a post date for those different dates. Let's say 7th. Let's keep it there for a moment. So let's say we want to post this one on the 14th. So we've decided those two dates. Now, what we'd love is to automatically have a review date that is calculated based on the post date. So we know that we're going to use a formula field because we want to take an existing field in our table and calculate something new. We want to take post date and have a formula that returns the date that is seven days before the post date. So we know that it's a formula field. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert left. I'm gonna call this review date. Let me find that formula field. There we go. Now there's a great question in the chat that was, well, how do we know what to put in the formula field? I don't, I don't necessarily know all of the different options here. So here there's this little learn more that gives you a, 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 a support article that has a breakdown of every single function that's available in the formula field. So folks who are familiar with other formulas, you may kind of have a sense of some might have the same name or a similar name to what you're used to, but you can always say, okay, well, what are we trying to do? We're trying to take a date, the, the post date, and try to find seven days before. So as I'm reading out here, date and time functions probably feels like the right section I should be looking to. So let me click into that. And then we have all of the options. So created time, that feels like the, the time at which we created uh, um, the, the record. That's probably not right. Date add though, kind of feels right. So if I look at this example on the right here, it's a date add, a date, 10, and then days, and it returns the date that is 10 days later. So this actually feels like the formula I should use. So let me go back into my formula. Let me write date add. And as I write it, as I hover over, there's like an explanation here that I can start using. So let me go ahead uh, um, and parse out this little explanation. So it says, takes a date time. In our case, that's gonna be post date adds a certain count, this is probably our seven or seven days. And then the units, is it a week? Is it a day? Is it a month? So let me write that out. I'm saying date add, take the post date. So again, it applies to every record in our table. So post date, there we go. It puts the value that's in the post date. 
a unit. I want seven days before, so minus seven, go back in time. And so Airtable knows what that minus seven means. I'm gonna go ahead and write dates. So with this, this is taking the post date and the result of this formula is gonna be this day, seven days before the post date. So let me go ahead and create that field. And I forgot something that's very important. You can format it. So Airtable knows that it's a date. I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna actually, no, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna remove the time field because I just want the date. Let me save that. There we go. So now we always have seven days before the post date automatically. So if I change this, let's say the 20th, you'll notice that this automatically updates to the 13th. Now, what's great about this formula field is that it acts like any other field in your table. So if I go to my posting calendar, this, I can add that formula field into um, my calendar. So I have post date as one date, and maybe I want to have review date as another option on my calendar so I can see when upcoming review dates are ahead. So I can see them here. I need to review the blog post and we have that information. What I can even do is if I put Xu table lamp, let's not put that on a Saturday. This is, I wanna post that on Wednesday. Automatically we have that review date created before. So I'm seeing some asks in the chat to just explain that date add one more time. So let me go do that. Coming here. So this is where we ended up with, we took date add, we took the post date minus seven in days. Let me break that down. So date add is the function. That's what returns a result. A function just says it takes parameters and returns a result. In this case, it takes a date. In our case, that was that post date. The number, which is, do you want me to add a certain unit? Do you want me to subtract? a certain unit and what is that unit? So a few questions in the chat, which was, uh, um, can we uh, uh, use different units? So if I come back here, you can see a list of units that you can use right here. So seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, quarter, years. So those are all options in this unit. In my case, I use days, but you can use months, quarter, something like that. Uh, there's another time that asked, could you use create time in the date? Any date works. As long as it's a date field in Airtable, you can put that date right here in the first parameter. And the questions, uh, um, uh, brackets, I'll get to that in a moment, Amanda, great question. So with that, that's how we get to our formula. We're saying we want to add a certain unit to a date. Parameter number one is that date. What do we want to add? And what is that unit? Is it months? Is it days? Is it weeks? So hopefully that breakdown helped folks. That was the second challenge, which is can we calculate days automatically? And yes, in the chat, some folks meant you can create milestones automatically. You totally can. You can create uh, uh, um, ranges with this just because it acts like any other date field in your uh, table. Okay.